Each year, as winter turns to spring, the fields begin to come alive with foals prancing and playing, but never straying too far from mom. For the owners and breeders, the many questions are real. Do I have a champion? How fast will he go? For now, the fantasies live for all. Will the foals live up to their royal pedigree? Will they go beyond? Of the thousands born each year, only a portion will make it to the races. Only the finest will go postward in the breeder's crown. And those who emerge victorious will be recognized as racing's kings and queens. Tonight, live from the Meadowlands in East Rutherford, New Jersey, it's the aged horse and gelding trot with over $200,000 up for grabs. In 1985, Express Ride captured the crown for two-year-old trotters. Last year, it was Sugar Cane Hanover taking the three-year-old trot. They meet tonight along with four other hopefuls in quest of the crown. Breeders' Crown 87 is being brought to you by Nuprin. Discover Nuprin strength. By Castleton, a tradition of excellence. Good evening and welcome to the championship series in harness racing, the Breeders' Crown. I'm Dave Johnson. Joining me on these ESPN broadcasts, Ellie Sarama, Stan Bergstein, and Alan Kirschenbaum. Tonight, Tom Dirk and the voice of the Meadowlands will be calling the action. This is the first of ten programs from nine different racetracks, starting tonight and going all the way through mid-November. And it'll be your chance to see some of the superstars of our sport and a chance for America's top standard breads to race into the history book. Our events are divided by traditional categories of age, gender, and gait, and we kick off the 87 Breeders' Crown Series tonight with older male horses on the trot, and a good time to bring in my partner, Ellie Sarama, a trainer in her own right. And Ellie, we're used to seeing fields of 10, 12 horses. Now, how come we only have six going to the post tonight? Well, first of all, Dave, the Breeders' Crown Series was to race the best of the best, and there were 18 horses eligible to this event, but owners and trainers had to make a decision whether or not they wanted to pay $10,000 dollars declaration mm -hmm. fee but I think this field of six tonight represents the cream of the crop and let's take a look at the full field in post position order with driver assignments and the morning line we start with the longest price in the morning line revolutionary and 30 year old Tommy Houghton is in the bike number two Shannon Bright will be driven by Jan Janssen and 10 to 1 sugarcane Hanover is the starting favorite nine to five and Ron Waples is the pilot Number four, Tabor Lobel with Bill O'Donnell starts at three to one, and three is also the price in the morning line on Dix Bell, Ray Remen the driver. And completing the field, Express Ride with Bert Lindstedt, five to two. We're just moments away from the post parade. Hope that you're enjoying a beautiful evening. It's great here at the Meadowlands, the excitement building, the big trotters in the paddock and ready to come onto the racetrack for the post parade. We'll be back after this. We're just about set for the post parade for the Breeders' Crown, the start of the 1987 series with a purse of $219,000. And Ellie, what's exciting now is now that it's in its fourth year, we have some situations where past winners of championship uh, events in the Breeders' Crown meet each other on the racetrack. Well, two champions are coming back tonight. Sugarcane Hanover, who won the three-year-old trot last year, and Express Ride two years ago won this event as a two-year-old. Ellie, we have six horses, but they have all taken sort of different routes to the Meadowlands this evening. Well, Sugarcane Hanover and Express Ride and Tabor Lobel, they all seem to be conditioned and pointed for this race. Dix Bell and Shannon Bright raced all year long, and they seem to be coming into this race in peak form. It's time now to take a look at the six, and you can choose the horse you're going to root for in this one-mile trot. And stepping onto the racetrack right now is a horse who has certainly been improving of late. This is number one revolutionary, and that's Tommy Houghton in the white and green. He started racing in June of this year, six starts with one win in a condition trot. He draws the rail, and even with that in his favor, he's going to have a tough assignment in here. 
Post position number two will be Shannon Bright. Shannon Bright coming out of the paddock right now. A Kentucky bred. And Shannon Bright, uh, well, he's certainly improved between 86 and 87. Well, he was quite erratic as a three-year-old, but he seems to have matured into a consistent open trotter. He's had the longest campaign of the year with 16 starts, but he has eight wins to his credit and over $100,000 in the bank this year. Shannon Bright. Now, here is Sugar Cane Hanover. No, actually, that is, uh, that's Express Ride. Ex Who is it, Ellie? <laughs> I can't see from the monitor here. I think it's Sugar Cane Hanover coming Sugar in. Cane Hanover, who is making only his second lifetime start at the Meadowland. Well, his first start last week, Dave, he won the Nat Ray Memorial here at the Meadowlands, trotting that mile to a lifetime mark of 155 and 1. He only has five starts under his belt, and Sugar Cane Hanover appears to be in peak form coming into this race. I believe the Simpsons really pointed him for this event tonight. Sugar Cane Hanover right now, the choice of the fans here at the Meadowlands in this Breeders' Crown event. Tabor Lobel is number four and the longest layoff of any of the horses in uh, this race. He hasn't been in action since July the 20th. Well, he was racing mainly an invitational company this year. He has only one win out of eight starts, but he's always right there at the end of the mile. He finishes second and third to his competitors, and with Billy O'Donnell in the bike, he could definitely be a major threat in this race. Now, the local favorite, the horse who has been seen here at the Meadowlands, was bred in New Jersey. Here he is, Dix Bell. He came out of the back paddock. He's a little nervous. He doesn't like to uh, get ready for the race with the rest of the horses. Uh, what about Dix Bell? Well, I think the Remins know their horse, and they would like to keep him as calm and as quiet as possible, so they could get permission from the uh, judge to keep him in the back paddock. But last year as a three-year-old, he started in this Breeders' Crown and finished eighth. Tonight, he's going to try again to capture the title. And Express Ride, who is the only horse to have captured a million-dollar event already. That was the uh, Houghton Memorial in 85, and Bert Lindstedt is the driver. And winning the Breeders' Crown that year also, it made him the richest two-year-old trotter ever with $840,000 in earnings. He has three impressive starts. He's coming back from the stud ranks, and I think he's going to be the horse that's going to give Sugar Cane Hanover a run for his money. A six-pack of talent, trotters in the Breeders' Crown. For a different perspective, let's go now to the paddock and near the winner's circle, here's Alan Kirschenbaum and Stan Bergstein. We're going to be making quite a fuss about some of these horses in a little bit, but we've got an excellent field of six drivers, and Stan Bergstein, as much as the Breeders' Crown is predominantly a United States series of races, only one driver in the field was actually born in the USA. That's even more ironic that it's an American sport, a traditional American sport that goes back 181 years of recorded history and has a heritage before that. But there are three Canadians and two Scandinavians and only one native-born American in the race. And that has been typical lately, particularly in trotting, where Scandinavians have played a heavy impact role. And Canadians, of course, have come to dominate the driving ranks in the United States. You mentioned Canadians. Of course, one of the great Canadian drivers is Ron Waples, and he'll be driving the prohibitive favorite here tonight. That's a horse by the name of Sugarcane Hanover. And Sugarcane Hanover is a picture of trotting grace, a maneuverable, smooth, versatile fighter with all the grace of, say, an Isaiah Thomas. Every stride of his, an absolute pleasure to watch. Here's Express Ride, who's more of a Kurt Rambis type. He relies on power and guts, two factors which he's been extraordinarily blessed. He's a little bit clumsy, and he certainly isn't pretty to look at, but he's certainly much more than effective. And last week's Nat Ray, a race for former Hamiltonian eligibles, we saw an example of horse training at its finest. Back when Sugarcane Hanover's owner, John Simpson Sr., was in the heyday of a Hall of Fame training and driving career, he was famous for managing a horse, pointing him toward the big race and having him peak at the proper time. He and son Jimmy, who trained Sugarcane Hanover along with the rest of the Simpson string, appear to have done just that. After a long layoff, Sugarcane Hanover was prepped slowly and did some racing in the minor leagues before returning to the Meadowlands dead fit. Express Ride, who's on the front end here, was only making his third start of the year, and he got a little bit weary in the final strides as Sugarcane Hanover trots past the field in the final steps. One would assume that it was only Express Ride's third start. He'll be all that much fitter tonight. Sugarcane Hanover clearly at the top of his game and these two are ready for tonight's breeders crown dave in all sports winning is having a dream come true in the trotting world well one race stands alone and as legends are made both the winner and the race share this reflected glory 
The contest itself is the subject of Stan Bergstein's Jewel of the Crown. Tonight's Breeders' Crown, a major classic in itself, is a fitting prelude to the brightest jewel in harness racing, the Hambletonian, which will be raced here at the Meadowlands tomorrow afternoon and seen on ESPN. The race is named for the super sire of the sport, who in the mid-1850s so dominated the breeding of harness horses that all 60,000 horses that race today, trotters and pacers, without exception, can be traced to him in their pedigree. The race was first presented in 1926 at the New York State Fair in Syracuse with driver Nat Ray guiding Guy McKinney to victory in Anna The purse then was $73,000. Tomorrow, it's one million. The mile then was in 2.04 and three quarters. It will be 10 seconds faster tomorrow. It moved on to Lexington, Kentucky and then found a long time home in Goshen, New York at the old good time track that gave it its rich heritage of Americana. Its winners have included the finest trotters in the sport, outstanding champions like Neville Pride, and the finest drivers, Hall of Famers like Stanley Dancer, one of only three men to win the great race four times, with Neville Pride, Super Bowl, Bonefish, and the Philly Duena, who won in 1983 after the brilliant Dancer's Crown, the favorite also trained by Dancer, died shortly before the race. The world champion trotter Prakas won in 1985 for driver Bill O'Donnell, one of the sport's brightest stars. And this year, the now and future champion Mac Lobel seems to have the race at his mercy. Veteran trainers and drivers are calling him the greatest trotter of all time. And two weeks ago, here at the Meadowlands, he won the Beacon Course Trot in the same dominant fashion as he has shown all season long in this unbeaten year of victories. John Campbell, the leading money-winning driver in the sport, is seen here guiding Mac Lobel as he widens out against many of the same colts he will be racing tomorrow in winning the Beacon Course at the Meadowlands. Campbell is looking for his first Hambletonian victory and he's won virtually everything else in the sport. The prize is this magnificent trophy and the winner's share of one million dollars. And we hope that you will join us for all the thrills of the Hambletonian here on ESPN tomorrow afternoon. The current odds for this evening's race. Revolutionary is at 35 to 1. Shannon Bright holds it 14. 3 to 5, the current price on Sugarcane Hanover. You bet 5, you win 3, that means you get 8 back. Tabor Lobel is at 5 to 1, and Dix Bell also at 5. Express Ride, second choice, at 3. Let's uh, find out how Alan Kirschenbaum thinks the race will be contested. Back to the paddock, and Alan. One thing you get when you get a short field is you get a different kind of strategy among the drivers. Speed horses don't get challenged too much, and that's going to help Express Ride and Dix Bell, who will both be leaving out of there fast. That's their style. They've drawn the outside. There are two horses in here who aren't really contenders. They're not exactly pretenders, but they just don't fit with these horses, and that's Revolutionary and Shannon Bright. And what they'll be doing is trying to salvage some money. They'll be sitting on the rail and not making any moves. That leaves us with the interesting question of what's Ron Waples going to do with Sugarcane Hanover. The horse is versatile, and though he doesn't show he can leave a lot, I think he might try and get out of there pretty soon. But he can leave, and I think he will. Probably, even if he does, he'll get away third. He'll be the first one to pull, and first over, a very tough trip for a horse. Tabor Lobel will be following him, but I like Sugarcane Hanover. Let's go back to Dave Johnson. Well, I like Express Ride. I think the short field helps him. I think it might be a little bit soft in the middle fractions. Now let's go to the man who will call the race. Here is Tom Durkin, track announcer at the Meadowlands. Tom? Thank you, Dave. On six in behind the gate and trotting well as we get underway. And uh, they're off. Shannon Bright is out fast. Express ride on the far outside. Dix Bell comes away between them for the lead. Revolutionary at the inside. Sugar Cane Hanover was out fifth. And Tabor LaBelle is sixth early as they round the first turn. And it's Dix Bell in front. Express ride, second now, and taken to the pocket. And then it's Revolutionary now, who is racing in third position and fired the back. Shannon Bright is now fourth, a gap of three. Back to Ron Waples, who is patient with Sugar Cane.
Hanover at this point, and the trailer is Tabor Lobel. 27 and 4 for that first quarter. They're up the back stretch now, and here comes Express Ride out of the pocket and up to take over from Dix Bell. A gap of three to Revolutionary, and another three lengths to Shannon Bright. Sugar Cane Hanover is still, he's about 10 lengths off the lead, and Tabor Lobel is the trailer as Express Ride trots a half mile in 56 and 2 fifth seconds. And the field now moving in into the final turn. Express Ride in command. And then Dix Bell is racing in second position. Revolutionary is third. Shannon Bright. Sugar Cane Hanover is still fifth. He's now eight lengths off the lead and beginning to roll on the outside. Tabor Lobel, the trailer, as they come to the top of the lane. Express Ride is out there by three. Dix Bell second and Revolutionary. Shannon Bright tips off the rail. Sugar Cane Hanover is still racing second to last. And Tabor Lobel, as the field turns for home, Express Ride has gone three quarters in one, 25 flat, comes to the final eighth of a mile with a three-length lead. Revolutionary, a long shot coming hard at him from the outside, and Sugar Cane Hanover rallies on the far outside. Dick Bell is in between horses, and here comes Sugar Cane Hanover to take the lead. Ron Waples timed it perfectly, and here's the wire. Sugar Cane Hanover has won it. Table Lobel closing fast to be second, and Dick Bell was third. The final time was 154 and three. Ron Waples very patient with his charge as the field moved into the back stretch. He made his move at the top of the lane and blew by him in the final quarter mile. Sugar Kate Hanover, who loves the mile stretch, uh, the long stretch here at the mile racetrack, gets the job done tonight in 154 and three, a new lifetime mark, and Ron Waples in the bike for the victory. Sugar Cane Hanover, who was bred in Pennsylvania by the Hanover Shoe Farm, gets it done this evening. Coming home in 154 and three fifths. His sire, Florida Pro, won a Hamiltonian heat in 155 back in 1978 to tie Speedy Somali for the fastest Hambo ever at that point. But his offspring, Sugar Cane Hanover, comes back and wins the first Breeders' Crown event ever held here at the Meadowlands. Now let's go to the uh, winner's circle and Alan Kirschenbaum. I am joined by a very happy Ron Waples who has just piloted Sugarcane Hanover to a 154 and 3 victory here in the Breeders' Crown. Ronnie, you told us last year how fond you were of this horse. Do you still feel the same way? Yeah, he's just a great little individual. Uh, he just needs a little help get around the first turn and then he just as much to say, I'll take it the rest of the way. He's just like driving a Cadillac or sitting in an easy chair. We're going to look at the replay, and we're going to take it right from the quarter of a mile, which was reached in a scorching 27-4 and four by Dix Bell. Ronnie, you know you're pretty far out of it. Are you worried at this point? No, I knew when they were cutting uh, fast fractions like that, uh, some of them were going to come back to me. And uh, with Dix Bell and Express Ride, they're both kind of front runners, so I knew they were going to get on down there pretty good. So it worked out good for us. Well, Bern Linstead has never shown an affinity for sitting behind horses. He sent Express Ride right to the front, and they are going to reach the half mile in a very fast 56 and 2. At this point, when you see the timer on the back stretch come up 56 and 2, what are you thinking, Ron? I'm hoping they'll trot on a little here. I want to get a good record on mine. Now, I'm expecting Sugarcane Hanover to start making up ground, but he really doesn't start to make up any ground through the third quarter either, does he? No, just about halfway around the last turn, uh, Johnson's horse uh, uh, comes out off the rail, and I just follow him, and then I had to come three wide off the turn, but it worked out real good for our advantage. As we come to the top of the stretch, Sugarcane Hanover is still at least six or seven lengths off the pace, and Express Ride has made the turn, and to some observers, felt home free. Ronnie, did you think you are going to win the race at this point? Well, I knew uh, we were going to trot on home pretty good if I didn't, because this little horse from the head of the lane home, boys, he just digs right in and goes all he can, and that's where he really shines. Right about here, Express Ride starting to get a little bit weary, and right here, I guess you know you have things locked up. Yeah, he trots on pretty handy there. Only the second horse ever to win two Breeders' Crowns, and that's got to feel good. Feels real good. Ronnie Waples, thank you, and congratulations. A great performance by Sugarcane Hanover, and let's go back to Dave Johnson. The happiest folks here at the Meadowlands is the groom, Charlie Coleman, who's been with the John Simpson stable for over 40 years. That's Charlie leading Sugar Cane Hanover back to the barn. He is uh, taking care of two Hamiltonian winners. He's the Red Smith Award uh, as caretaker of the year. Congratulations, Charlie. It is official, and the Breeders' Crown, 1987 for aged horses and geldings on the trot. 
is uh, now in the record book and the trophy presentation taking place right now in the winner's circle. The beautiful trophy, about 40 pounds of crystal from Orfors in Sweden, named in honor of the wonderful horseman Bill Houghton. And uh, we have the prices now. Sugarcane Hanover pays $340, $260, and $240. Tabor Lobel, $4.340. And, and Dix Bell pays $3.60 to show. The Exacta, a 3-4 combination, pays $11.80. Back to Allen in the winner, sir. Stan, the driver of Sugarcane Hanover, Ron Waples, is certainly a future Hall of Famer, but his owner is a Hall of Famer. John Simpson, Sr., is one of the most respected men in this sport. He is, of course, a member of the Hall of Fame, was a great trainer, wonderful, magnificent race driver, and uh, a man now who has guided the destinies of Hanover Shoe Farm, the largest standard bred breeding farm in the world. It's a victory there, too, because Florida Pro, the sire of this horse, of course, is a Hanover Shoe Stallion. It's a family victory, really. He, John Sr., has John Jr., great trainer and driver, Jimmy, who has trained this horse to perfection, aiming for last week's Nat Ray and tonight's uh, Breeders' Crown, and has won them both the two richest events for older trotters. And it's even a family victory in the sense of Charlie Coleman, the groom, who, as Dave mentioned, has been with the family for 45 years, taking care of their Hamiltonian winners, their Little Brown Jug winners, and now their double Breeders' Crown winner. He's a great, great caretaker. What's left for a free-for-all trotter to accomplish? Well, he's accomplished most of it. He, what he can do now is take on the older trotters in the sport and see if they can chase him, and they'll have to, or else he'll come through the stretch as he did tonight for Ron Waples. I might mention connection with Charlie Coleman, who's a Harness Tracks of America Groom of the Year. He is a man who keeps his horse in condition for Jimmy Simpson. Well, congratulations to the entire Simpson family. Congratulations to Ron Waples, who has won his fourth Breeders' Crown race. Let's go back to Dave and Ellie. And Ellie, what do you think? Oh, this was just like deja vu of last year's race. Sugarcane Hanover trotted from off the pace, destroyed the field, and he did it again tonight. I didn't think he'd make up all that ground. I really thought Express Ride was going to be home free for him. Well, they really went very fast fractions to the half, and that more or less sets a race up for a horse that finishes, and he had plenty of finish. There was money, uh, purse money, all the way back to six. I didn't expect that uh, middle half to go as fast as it did, but they, they were out there gunning. Well, there was a lot of action between Dix Bell and Express Ride early, and that's what set up the race for fast fractions to the half. Well, thanks very much for joining us. This is Dave Johnson for Ellie Sarama, Alan Kirschenbaum, Stan Bergstein, and Tom Durkin, who called the action. Thanks very much. <laughs>